back with. I just like having my books there. I have my books there. With Tina Turner book I read somewhere here. I have games piled up in games. I just really. Oh, and I really like enjoy, I enjoy reading comic books. Did I mention that? Uh, yeah, okay. I mentioned that previously. It was long. Uh, trying to finish this book. It's um, by Emma Daviri. Um, half Nigerian, mixed race Nigerian, I, or I believe of Irish descent. And Nigerian descent, raised in Ireland, so part of the United Kingdom, and she discusses the complexities her history growing up as a mixed race girl, you know, typically with the hair of an Afro of African descent. Sub-Saharan African descent, because I know there's specific there's like specificness, but I know Eastern Africans, upper the Northern African regions, the hair, the density and the hair texture is very, very much more than those of us who are from like West African and Central African and the lower the Southern African regions, or here more tightly curled. Anyway, so. The her book is is titled "Don't Touch My Hair." And Emma, the beauty. It's really interesting literature. It's a really interesting book. Not literature is a book that covers a history, her history, and I like the fact that she goes really in depth into the significance of why. And how, um, particularly the white supremacy, how she grew up as the, one of the only mixed race girl who does not fit the an aesthetic of what some or some of us believe a mixed race individual would probably look like. The loose curls, basically, and the light skin and the bone structure that fits the dynamics of. And this is in the terms of white, black, mixed race. So the, she goes in that she goes deep, she goes how her hair didn't fit that aesthetic of how she or people would perceive it to be. She goes into the history of why certain hairstyles, certain braiding styles were used. She goes into the history of how the significance of hair care when it comes to African um, members, African descendants specifically of enslaved individuals and also from, you know, mainland Africa, um, descendants of sub-Saharan descent, Eastern, sometimes Eastern, sometimes West, um, also West Indian. She also mentioned her time when I'm studying in the United States and also being, wanting to be a part of a, a of a wider African or black environment basically with others who look like her and who share her, her her way of existing in this world in a western lens basically from a western view for her, it was really difficult growing up as a child, and she goes deep into that. She goes into the anthropological, the sociological, and yeah, she touches just a slight bit on the. She went historical, anthropological, sociological issues, 
and you know, the facts and the historical references, as she mentions, like the past and how that influenced the present, or so concerning African members of the African descent. Um, also, the economy, she's just slightly on the economy and how the business works when it comes to Afro and, and media interpretation. That's also the most important. I feel like if you, that's a, one of the part of her discussion and the, the methodology of this whole book. How the media and the, the, the public, the mass public, the white public view those of us who are African descent, especially the minority, especially those who are like, in her case, she was born in like Ireland, so it's basically a minority, like a very small minority. Far beyond what I can even comprehend, because I'm from the Caribbean, we're all black, well, the majority of us black. So the microaggression she experienced was very, 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 difficult for her so i like that i like that and she didn't just talk about herself she talked about the history as i mentioned history topology sociology um i like the fact that she went in depth and she actually went to her um her father's because her father is the one who's um of african descent here and her mother is i think of yeah i just got of the united kingdom i remember yeah one of the countries in the kingdom it was Irish, it's Irish. Um, she's a of Irish. And um, she went back to, I think, a village in um, Nigeria. Or was it somewhere else? She, visit, she visited, she learned hair braiding. She had come to understand the complexities of the, 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 the historical and the, the metal. I think it was, there was also mythology behind one of the hair, how the hair the way the hair grows brings us closer to God. I think it's one of the one of the tribes, ethnic tribes. They were like their mythology of the religion or their prior religion, which pre-colonial. Mentioned how the higher the hair is, that's within the Afro. The closer you are to God, and I kind of. Kind of like, I like that. Is it the Christian God? Is the regal Christian God? No. It's the, I think, Mother Earth, fairy, not Gaia or anything like that. It's their God. That tribe, that specific ethnic tribe's God. But also the intricacies of the hair braiding, why hair braiding is popular, how it display, displays not only aesthetic um, purpose, but also a very, yeah, I, it, it serves a purpose in like strategic mapping out locations and such. That was very interesting. I like that about it. That's what I'm like. I also thought about maybe I should do have my friend like every few months. Um, I should get my hair done in a way that this place, but I think that would be too intricate <laughs> to, maybe it will be too difficult to pull off. Just braid my hair in such a way that it maps out something like maybe has a meaning of a location or, or a point or a, it would be pretty cool. I think my hair can really, it, it can't take that much, um, Manipulation, basically. Uh, so yeah, if you're interested, don't touch my hair. Emma Dabiri. I'll read a quote, I'll just read a description in the back. Emma Dabiri is a teaching fellow in the Africa Department at SOAS and a visual sociology PhD researcher at Goldsmiths. She has been published in a number of anthologies, 
alongside such post colonial heavyweights as Omi Baba and Akil Mbembe. Mbembe and academic journals as well as the national press. A regular BBC face to present it back in, the, in time, Brixton, BBC Two, and Britain's last masterpieces, BBC Four, as well as the sociological experiment is Love Races, Channel Four. Most recently, she hosted Radio Four's critically acclaimed documentary Journeys into Afrofuturism. Her hair has been disappointing people since birth. I think a few of us can relate. And it's not all negative, it's all positive at the point. I feel like she comes from a place that would of of acceptance and an acknowledgement of what was. And she's hoping that what was can be used to become something better and something positive. So then we can move along and become a better I wouldn't like to say civilization by better and more proud diaspora of African descendants, basically. That's a discussion I will want to have. How do we view each other and how proud are we actually? Because I feel like black pride is something that is performed even by us because anti-blackness is not only a interracial type of display i've seen like outer outer side of the black communities and we have multiple black communities and our black communities will matter individually that's one thing i do believe when we, we exist we have our own interpretation of it i thought at first i thought now that's another discussion. And sometimes it comes with a boldness. Even I have to accept myself and really pull myself back into to having an understanding that I am of what I, I came from. I'm West Indian, yes, of African descent. And yes, it does not take away, but I do not understand the claims of being an individual who, uh, who is living on the continent of Africa, living in whatever town, city, so I can't really say how that lived, but I do understand as an individual living on an island, as a millennial, and that's all I can say. At first I used to be like, oh, I went from the nine to accepting, not really denying, but not, not just acknowledging it. It was just a subtle, non-acknowledgement basically unacknowledgement to accepting to a very over arching overdone or overdoing what's the word just overdoing it in my personal my personal self not outside out there really, to the extent but <laughs> In this after I'll go in depth in that. At this point I don't even have the energy to explain, but I'm very pleased with myself. Um they surpassed the 30 minute mark. Yes, if you're interested, please follow me, like my page, enjoy my content, and leave comments. I'm always looking forward to new people, to new discussions. Have peace and take care. Have a good day, or good evening, or good afternoon.